what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan back for some more chemistry fun. In this video, we are going to identify and describe the various characteristics of atoms and their subatomic particles. Breaking it down a little bit, we are going to 1. Identify the three subatomic particles, 2. Discuss the relative mass, charge, and location of each of the subatomic particles, and numero 3. Identify the mass number, atomic number, and the element using the periodic table. Okay, now as you think about this video, we're gonna study the Adams family, but not the Adams family, A-D-D-A-M-S, nay. We're gonna study the Adams family, A-T-O-M-S. That's right, the Adams family consists of just three members. Patty Proton, here comes Sister Nelda, and then not so happy, Elliot Electron. The Adams family, folks, A-T-O-M-S. Okay, so to start things off, the atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains the properties of that element and can be divided into two general regions, the nucleus and the electron cloud. The atom is basically the nucleus and what's called the electron cloud, or the empty space surrounding the nucleus. Now, we're gonna start with the nucleus. It's a very small region near the center of an atom that is positively charged. The nucleus contains our first Adams family me member, good old Patty Proton there. Our protons have a relative electrical charge of plus one and a mass of approximately one atomic mass unit, or AMU. Now, it's important to note that the number of protons in your nucleus is also known as the atomic number. And it's what distinguishes an atom of one element from the atom of another. So as you take a look at your screen there, your atomic number is going to tell you the number of protons. For lithium, that number is three. Three protons in an atom of lithium. As you take a look at the screen, try not to go insane by all those moving particles. We want to use the atomic number to distinguish between the two atoms. As I look at the atom on my left, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 positive green protons. Atom on the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 green positive protons. As I take a look at my periodic table, atomic number 5 belongs to boron, atomic number 6 belongs to carbon. Here's my periodic table. On this periodic table, which is the one that you get to use on all quizzes and tests, atomic numbers are at the top. Take a look, boron, atomic number five, five protons, carbon, atomic number six, six protons. Which brings us to the second member of the Adams family, good old Nelda, Nelda Neutron. The nucleus also contains neutrons, which do not have an electrical charge and a mass of approximately 1 AMU. Now, it's important to note that the sum of an atom's protons and neutrons are what give an atom its mass. Again, remember, they each have an approximate mass of 1 AMU. So as you take a look at these two atoms again, we're going to start with the atom on the left. Our atom of boron has a mass of 11 because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 positive protons, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 neutral neutrons. Boom! 11 atomic mass units. The the carbon atom in this example has a mass of 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 protons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 neutrons. So again, the mass comes from the sum of your protons and your neutrons. Now, I've thrown it around a little bit already, but you need to recognize that the unit of measurement of mass for atomic particles is the atomic mass unit, or AMU. And that unit is derived from 1 12th of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Now, as we talk about neutrons, it's important to know that atoms of the same element may have different numbers of neutrons. These are known as isotopes. So as you take a look at the two atoms on your screen, recognize they are both atoms of boron because they have five positive protons, and it is the number of protons that we use to identify the element. However, notice that they are different isotopes of boron because they have different masses. And they have different masses because their number of neutrons are different. This brings us to the electron cloud. It's a very large region that surrounds nucleus and is negatively charged. Again, as you come back to your model, this region of empty space is known as the electron cloud. But that electron cloud is where our third and final member of the Adams family hangs out. Good old Elliot Electron, very negative expression. Maybe he's not happy to be outside the nucleus. I don't know. A relative electrical charge of negative one and a mass that is so small, it's approximately zero. 
In fact, electrons have such a small mass that for our purposes, we're not gonna use it when determining the atomic mass of an atom. We're just gonna look at protons and neutrons when it comes to masses of atoms. Important to note that atoms that are electrically neutral or have no charge overall must contain the same number of electrons as protons. Now, it's important to note for the AP course, the actual charge of an electron is negative 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. A coulomb is just a measure of electric charge. So a single electron doesn't have a very large charge. What will be important though is to recognize that a mole of electrons or Avogadro's number of electrons will have a charge of approximately 96,500 coulombs. And that charge of one mole of electrons is known as Faraday's constant. Okay, so as you look at these two isotopes of boron, again, they have different masses, but note that each of them are electrically neutral because they have the same number of protons as electrons. Last couple of things here, we'll talk a lot more about electrons and the electron cloud in its own special unit, but recognize that they exist in complex regions of space called orbitals, which are organized in various energy levels. Remember this model of the atom where that empty space is divided up into orbitals is our current understanding of the structure of the atom. You should know that the outermost level is called the valence level, and that will determine how the atom will chemically interact with other atoms. Very much like your skin is the outermost level of your body, and that is the area that interacts first with the surroundings. We'll talk more about the idea of orbitals and energy levels when we get to the next unit and we focus on the electron cloud there. Whew, okay, that's it for this video. As always, take a quick moment to check out the links beneath the video. Have a fantastic day.